So in this last video of our series on finance for product managers, we want to connect the projects that you're doing back to the framework that we showed you in last week's lecture around valuation. So how do you connect the projects that you're doing to ultimately what the value of that business is? And at a high level, this might feel really easy, right? There's the, the cost to conduct the project that you're leading relative to how it might change the valuation, how long it's going to take you to realize that value, and the probability of the outcome. And for those of you who spent much time in an MBA classroom, you'll certainly know that there are tools like net present value that do a really good job looking at the first of these three values, but not so much that last one, not so much the probability of the outcome. And this is particularly important as a product leader who's going to be spreading the kind of work they do across all three categories of the ANSOF matrix, the core, adjacent, and transformational initiatives. And, and as you no doubt know, the probability is going to be different for each of these different things. You know, the core and most much of the adjacent is going to be more of this bell curve-like outcome, while the transformational is going to be much more of a power law type outcome here. And so when you're tying back to the probability of the outcome, then you, you can't value things with a bell curve similar to the way you value things with the power law curve. And specifically, the harder part of those two, I would argue, is the transformational or, or what we call inside Carnegie Mellon, your, your corporate startup activities, right? Because those corporate startup activities look a lot like traditional venture activities. And if you think about traditional venture activities, you know, the reality is that the returns are driven by those so-called 10x investments. And I don't want you to focus on the entire uh, screen here, the entire uh, cohorts. Just really look at the part that is not shaded in blue here. It, the, the, that's part of it shows the difference between people who do two to three times their fund returns versus three to five times their fund returns versus greater than 5x. So this is, just to, to make sure you're following this data, this is overall venture fund outcomes. And then what percentage of deals in that fund's outcomes on a deal-by-deal -deal basis deliver a 10x? And so not surprisingly, the funds that perform the best have the highest percentage of 10x investments. But using that same last three cohorts to focus on, this is the important point. They also have a higher percentage of money losing investments, i.e. they put maybe a million dollars into a startup and got less than a million dollars back out, which is why Chris Dixon, who did this work in 2015, calls this the Babe Ruth effect of venture capital because part of venture capital here is striking out a lot, but also hitting a lot of home runs. Thinking about that math in your mind now, lots of strikeouts, lots of home runs, right? You can see how that also looks more like the power law curve, not the bell curve. And so you can't use models that assume a bell curve like outcome because the value really comes from on the, on this, uh, red curve. It comes from the, the, the outliers, those, those 10 X or greater than 10 X like outcomes. And that long right tail, that's where all the value comes from. So we need to account for that in valuation. And so I think startup equity valuation does a great job doing this. And that's why, you know, venture investors often value their investments based on the next round investors. But inside a company, you sort of need something that captures that, but does it in a way where it also kind of isn't dependent on independent third parties who don't exist for your transformational projects. And, and we've come up with a solution for this inside the corporate startup lab called the option gate model. And the option gate model basically helps companies understand what those projects are like as you move along with two key inputs. First of all, the, the market sizing part of it. So go back a couple of videos and you can kind of revisit how we do market sizing. And then also, what's the path from where you are today to ultimately a successful outcome? And so it gives you this framework to value those transformational ideas 
using similar numbers, if not a similar technique, or I guess in, it's not if not, it gives you similar values while not providing it the same way, but similar kinds of numbers so that you can look at core versus adjacent versus transformational. Look at the projects that you're doing and tie them back to the overall changes in valuation. Hopefully that helps you sort of put a bow around these projects you're doing and how they tie ultimately to what a company is worth. And I hope you've enjoyed this overall series. Uh, if you haven't watched all the videos, please go back and watch them now and would love suggestions and requests for other pieces of content that we can put on this YouTube channel. Thanks so much and hope you have a great day.